Hey everyone, this is Tyson Alger from The Oregonian, and here is a brief edition of the Official Visit podcast. I just got back from East Lansing to see Oregon lose 31-28 to to number 5, then number 5 Michigan State. They are now number 4. Uh, Andrew Greif is in Tampa Bay watching Marcus Mariota's NFL debut. It looks like it went pretty well. Uh, all-time best debut for a rookie quarterback ever. Perfect quarterback rating. Yada, yada, yada. He's a good player. Uh, I think you guys already knew that. Uh, today, it's Sunday. Uh, Mark Helfrich always does his day after uh, press conference. Uh, usually, we transcribe and write these things out. I'm a little bit of a time crunch, so I decided to turn this into a podcast episode. Um, anyways, here's here's just a, a, recorded, a recorded version of his press conference today uh, with some questions from the rest of the media, some questions from me phoned in. And uh, yeah, uh, enjoy. Now that it's been a day... Is there anything else that you can kind of take apart from last night or anything else that, that stands out about yesterday's game? Well, there's a million things. And that, that's obviously the difficult part of, of playing a team like that on the road, just in, in that environment. And, you know, every single excruciating detail in, in, you know, in your mind is the difference in the game. And, and so the, the key to that is as you take inventory as a coach, first and foremost, and, and, and our staff certainly has done that of ourselves, and then your unit, and then, you know, individually amongst the players, is you learn from it. You take it to it, you write it down, you look at it, you know, you, 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 you don't turn the page yet, you read the page, you digest it, you, you fix it, and maybe you burn it and, and move forward. Um, but yeah, there's a, a, you know, that kind of game, thousand uh, little, little tiny details that, that um, make make the outcome what it, what it was. Mark, it seemed like the tempo wasn't quite as fast last night. Was that something that was predetermined going in, or was it just how the game wore out or wore on? Yes and no. Um, they, they uh, how, how they defend brings up a, you know kind of some things where you want to the formation things a little bit differently, motion things a little bit differently. Um, but when we were in go fast mode, we weren't we weren't uh, going to the tempo. We we need to. To, to be operating at, um, and so that, that's something that, that we'll certainly address and, and get, get situated. And Mark, with Charles Oakland coming back and seeing how effective he was that first couple of series, what happened afterwards? Did they just kind of make some adjustments to see if kept any ball after the first quarter? Um, a few things, but yeah, again, uh, they're gonna they're gonna make some adjustments. We need some things. Um, Charles is a fantastic. Of, of getting out, he, he was kind of 
I don't want to say unsure, but just of that 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 last thing for a player coming back from a, uh, a significant uh, setback is just getting hit and making sure everything is, is okay and feels right and they can they can feel confident going forward. And I think that that happened in the first game, and, and you know even now he's closer to to, to being totally 100%. Ryan, based on the reaction you gave to your guys last night, how did that reaction compared maybe to the reaction of the Arizona loss last year? Similar. Similar. And, and, you know, unfortunately, we can, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, we can pinpoint, you know, reactions from losses. And so there's a few guys, or a bunch of guys that, that were in that same locker room. And, and you know, we just talked about how that, that galvanized, galvanized this last year. There's absolutely zero reason why that can't happen again. Uh, you know, again, we had so many, so many little things, whether it's, uh, you know, gap errors, uh, dropped interception. You know, there's so many, so many things that, that guys again you can sit there and watch them and go, oh my gosh, that, that again, that's what makes it that much more frustrating. But you can't dwell on. You have to, to fix it and move on, and and, and we will, and, and they will. We knew with Dow and Calhoun were really good, but how do you feel like their linemen held their pressures that they presented fairly well? I mean, they're 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 very, very talented. Those, those guys uh, in their front did some, some great things. We, we blocked them for the most part okay. Uh, but yeah, there, there's some unique skill sets in a couple of those guys that, that make, make, life difficult, make life difficult. Uh, you know, we're going to have some trouble seeing around those guys a couple times and, and not led to, to broken plays. But yeah, they're, they're, they're very, very good. Tyson Alger, do you have any questions? Yeah, Mark. Uh, so, so yesterday in the press conference, uh, Vernon's going out of his way to repeatedly say this loss is on him, this loss is on him, this loss is on him. How how does that go over in the locker room? Because I'm sure those guys don't all pay this loss to be on him, but it seems to be kind of like a senior leadership move of him to kind of place this thing on him, at least in the media as it is. Well, I think that's the natural reaction of a quarterback or, or, you know, a guy in a leadership position that, and a guy that has a ball that things a lot. Um, and absolutely, that'll, that'll resonate with guys. And, and, again, the biggest thing is, is for Vernon or for me or, you know, every other person in our program is to individually look at yourself and, and how, can you, how can you solve the problem. So if he takes the initiative to, to step up and admit the, the fault and all those things, that then hopefully, hopefully will motivate everybody else to, to improve. Mark, kind of along that same line, and you'd be the perfect person to answer this as a former quarterback. That term, loosely. <laughs> um, how much did Vernon's index finger cause him maybe to overthrow Byron on that pass or some of those missed opportunities? Was there anything to that? You know, any, anything that we say of that nature is an excuse to we don't, we don't really get in that realm. Uh, just all I can say to, you know, for him is he, he's, he's got it out like, like other guys out there that are getting other things out. Uh, what can Vernon Adams improve upon going forward? Oh, he can improve upon a ton of things, you know, just of, of being uh, so new to the to the to the system of, of just knowing, you know, certain certain nuances and things that, that, that don't appear until, you know, a, a goal line situation or, you know, whatever it may be that, that you can't really simulate. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I know we talked about it last night, last night freely of just throwing the ball away a couple times when, when uh, the moment almost calls for it. But, you know, at the same time, that's what makes him such a, a competitor is he, you know, those guys want the ball and they want to make the play and sometimes throwing it to row 26 is the right play. Um, but, uh, you know, we have full confidence in, in him and, and all other guys going, going forward. Briefly switching speeds real quick. Did you watch any of Marcus's game today? I saw a couple of the highlights. I saw the, the little ticker thing on ESPN when I walked by over here. What were your, your thoughts on the little ticker thing and some of the highlights? <laughs> Well, the, the, the ticker was something to the effect of first day history or something, so that's pretty much par for the course in his world of, of uh, you know, breaking records on game one. So that's, that's very cool and obviously very happy for him. And, and at the same time, I'd like to say not surprised. Pat? I know teams get 
get the ball out quickly, like the Eastern Washington did with the quarterback, one sack and like 87 pass attempts. Are you okay with the pressures that you guys are getting on quarterbacks, or are they doing stuff that just kind of minimizes that? Well, you never satisfied unless there's a ton of sacks and, and pressures. That, you know, we did we did move him uh, several times, and, and you know, last night it's, it's not much more frustrating because I think we got the end. Our defense really rallied there at the end, and then just to, to compliment one another and finish that out would finish that out would have been a huge uh, confidence boost for everybody. But there's a, a bunch of plays where again it's it's you know a guy making a play on the ball downfield or where you know. They make two great interceptions. We had we had some chances for for some more, um, and again, that's the difference in the game. Oh, Back here. Uh, what was your assessment of the special teams unit uh, as a whole? Well, as a whole, okay. Uh, I thought you know obviously the return game was was uh, great, and then frustrating. You know the the, the pinch kicks and those kind of things that people are going to do because they don't want the ball in our returners' hands. Um, those are things that we work all the time. And, and the ball can never hit the ground uh, in those situations, and it, and it did a couple times. Um, and so we'll, we'll clean that up. Uh, you know, had the one penalty, which was was a tough one. Um, and, and then you know, our punt team was was not you know not as, as efficient as you like. Did did a couple things good. Um, did a couple things well. Um, kick off coverage was really good. Not uh, will be kicked the ball really well. Um, and uh, you know, one thing that's encouraging is our, our PAT team played their tails off. That's always kind of telltales behind how how a team is going to compete. Uh, you know, on a snap, where a lot of guys will take off. They they played hard through to the end. Yeah, I have a question. I've been sitting and uh, I've been wondering at the game, not Sunday Monday quarter, not Sunday quarter, Sunday morning quarterbacking. I'm trying not too much. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I have to go. I mean, one of the strengths of Vernon Adams seems to be its ability to throw on the run, kind of like Mario would. And we haven't seen too many rollouts, and especially possibly on the third and seven in the last series. He had, he's been a lot of pocket, but he didn't have anywhere to go, basically, on that play. But if he rolled out, wouldn't it have been a lot of a safer thing? And is there a reason he's not rolling out more? Well, some of those things, um, you know, we, uh, we have done. Um, some some things is, is a byproduct of how they how they play how they defend, um, you know. And there are times when we should have stayed in the pocket, and times when we should have been out of the pocket, and, and so those are all things that, that you know we will correct going forward. Tyson, do you have any more questions? Uh, I, I just with uh, um, with with Dwayne Stanford yesterday was was he just not. Uh, a huge part of the game plan were they covering him well I, I correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think he was even targeted once last night he was uh, defended exceptionally well a couple times um, and uh, Dwayne did a great job in the run game uh, you know that that's kind of their their MO defensively is they're going to press the outside guys and, and try to really eliminate them uh, in, the, in, the, in the game plan and you know more of, of off coverage, so to speak, on the safeties and the, and the number two receivers, um, but our, our outside guys weren't as involved, and that's that's again just of how how they defend you. Go back to Joey. Uh, early on, with like the blocking on the outside with the receivers was really good. Now that's a point of pride for you guys. Was that something you were particularly happy with in this in this matchup? Yeah, they did, did a nice job of that. Had a couple. I mean, just. You know, a couple, a couple of really big plays in the perimeter. Of, they did a good job of uh, gaining a great crowd. Are you good, Tyson? Yep, I'm good. Okay, last question, Jerry. Looking ahead to Georgia State, um, I think we'll see Jeff Lockie get to play in this game a little more, possibly. Uh, I mean, I know you want to win, you want to stay injury free, but it's an opportunity maybe for more playing time for some guys, you think, in this game. I don't know. We have, you know, this year. right now we're at this at this point of the the day we're we're cleaning everything up, trying to to, to you know fix and improve and move on, and then just kind of generically game plan. And as as we go forward the next couple of days, obviously we're going to try to do everything we can to to score points 